What's up, guys? Eric Rasmussen here, PDGA number 37945. And I just got done officiating a wedding, and we're gonna go straight into In the Bag because I'm available and I have my disc with me. Uh, first of all, notice the bag. You gotta shout out Pound Bags. Favorite bag I've ever used, 100%. I'm gonna start with my putters. Um, and I've recently gone back to these. I kind of switched between these and the Challenger SS, but the Jawbreaker Challenger. And uh, I think these are about 172, but um, just love them. I love the, the the mild stability they have. I usually, I, I'm right now in between those and the Challenger SSs. Um, I've tried a few of the Infinite Disc line putters, just hadn't found one that I really, really loved. So here's, here's an old one that you guys will love seeing. This is one of the first, if not the first, Seablin Tomb. I think this is before the Dallin Blanchard one from two or three years ago. And uh, if you haven't thrown one of the tombs, they're just an amazing throwing putter. Uh, easy to come out of the hand. I think it's a rat bottom and a colt top or vice versa. But um, this is 200 feet in, backhand approach. I don't flick it too often. Um, and then I recently got this <laughs> goofy disc. Uh, this is Divergent Disc Gollum. And uh, it's like two zones glued together. And it's in this really rubbery plastic called Stay Put. So when it hits the ground, it just sticks. And uh, I'm still trying to figure this out all the way, but I like it more than the typical zone. It doesn't go nearly as far. A lot more controllable, really good for those approaches. I typically use it forehand, but it works backhand as well. Um, all right, let's move into the mid ranges. So I don't throw many mids and I have a couple molds I just really like. And uh, the first one is the Buzz. And I've, go, I've gone between different molds. I used to throw the four time. Um, they just got too expensive uh, to throw. I'd worry about getting in the water and everything. So this run came out last year. It's a 21 and it's a Glow ESP FLX. Right out of the bag, this thing is straight. It's got a really grippy um, plastic. It's nice and bendy, but it just goes straight. You, you can flip the, you can uh, hyzer flip this to flat. Just so nice. If you guys ever find a run of these, give it a try. It's it's probably my favorite run of Buzz. Not not a huge fan of the stamp, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Also, it says glow. It doesn't glow at all. <laughs> Funny little side bet or side point. Uh, the next one's a verdict, and I'm surprised that the other manufacturers, the other disc manufacturers out there, haven't come up with a good competitor to this yet. I just haven't found one. Um, the flight of this thing, the stability. It's like a big brother to the Buzz. It might be a little faster but seems to be equally glidey and just holds up great in a headwind. Uh, you can use it on some forehand approaches, but um, just a nice, if you need something that's about 280, a nice hyzer in, uh, and that's a biofusion, it just works. So this is where we get into my love of infinite discs. I think their fairway discs are insane and the, the recent addition of the Dynasty uh, just blows it away. So I'll start with the centurion um love this disc for the woods straight flyer very similar to an fd um if you know that flight but it's just it just goes so straight um i think it might be kind of like a leopard too i'm not sure what the mold is on this one what it came out of but uh um, such a great disc for just a controlled can't hold up in a headwind um but it's not meant to um very much a control driver in the uh, neutral flight path so this one is almost like a big brother to it. This is um, an Exodus. This is a 19 from a vacation land, just a S line. Um, very, very straight, a little more stable than that Centurion. I can trust it a little more. I'm pretty sure that the Exodus is like the Eagle L mold, um, but this thing has been in my bag for a long time and I just love it. I don't see any, I don't see any future where that one's coming out. And then these, I've, I've had a couple different runs of these, these C-Line Exoduses, and most of them are very similar as far as stability. They're just a bump up from the S-Lines. So if you need something a little more stable, not quite as long as the Dynasty, um, this is your control entry the Exodus. And uh, it's just a great, great flying disc. So this, this is my old favorite Infinite disc. I still love these discs, but it's the Scepter. And I bag three. And um, I, I found these, I used the bag of the Swirly Esplins because they were nice and stable, but I found these Drew Gibson uh, scepters last year, I think is when they came out. And man, they're just so nice. So this one is still fairly new. I bought like six or seven of these things so I'd have backups. 
very, very stable right off the go. And then they've got the flat profile top. So they just have an incredible feel in the hand flight. Um, I don't play night golf, so the glow is just a texture thing, but the feel of the plastic is great. It's got a good grippy texture. Um, and, the, and like I said, new, they're just real beefy. So then I have this blue one and this was my beefcake for a while, but I beat it in and um, just another fantastic disc. This one I'll use a lot of backhand, the stable approaches, um, but primarily forehanding these scepters. And then this, <laughs> I love this disc, it's so goofy. Um, this is my second one, I had an ace with a silver one I had, but these G-Star scepters, because of the G-Star plastic, they're less stable, it makes them incredible on that backhand. They remind me a lot of an old felon, um, the old school felons, but they just, uh, they have great glide, great stability. Um, 320 I can just throw this thing flat it'll hyzer right in there super super control disc it would be like that one would feel almost like a big brother of that exodus that that uh, orange one I showed you and now we come to my favorite infinite disc and really this is just my arm speed um, I love this disc in almost any mold any company that I've thrown it these nine speed fairway drivers are my favorite so we just came out with this one infinite Disc just came out with this uh, this year and it's called the dynasty and I've been waiting for this disc for a while. I tried the Aztec out I remember asking other people in infinite. What is your solution to this? Stable nine speed disc and there just wasn't one yet. So I've been throwing the getaway most previously to this one It's very very similar um, I don't even know what I would say the dynasty and the getaway are different. Uh, the feel in the hand is definitely different The dynasty feels like it might push a little further. It might be a little more stable, but overall just Amazing and this is an eye blend which typically aren't as stable But some of our infinite discs when you have them in the eye blend like the tomb is like this They get a little more dome on top and so they're more stable and that's how this one is It's a little more domey than the s blend is and this was that first one they sent us and uh, Still very stable and I love it and uh, that's again that hyzer in. I don't I don't forehand that too often but about 350 and I can just crank on that thing it'll hold I notice I can actually throw it almost like it's a distance driver. It's got really good stability. Doesn't hold up in a full power headwind shot, but it's not, again, not meant to. I'd probably bump up to the scepter for that or, or into the distance driver. So this is the one everybody loves, these, these Eric Oakley dynasties, and they are great. These S lines, I would probably try to bag more of these, but I only picked up two when they came out because I didn't know how good they were. And then when I went back to get more, they were all sold out and I'm not, don't feel like paying $35 right now for one, but these, uh, these Eric Oakley dynasties are incredible. All these dynasties I'm throwing are max weight. Um, this one's super straight and it, it almost was that way when I got it. So it, it was a little bit stable, but it hit a couple trees and it's really straightened out. Um, throw this thing kind of soft. It'll still stay on that stay, stable hyzering line. But if I put, put a move on it, it'll do the flip to flat straight and um, doesn't like to turn too much over. I can force it over, but um, it's really my straight flyer. If I'm in the woods, I need a longer shot. It'll, it'll hit a pipe and just go all the way down. And then I have, this is my most recent dynasty <laughs> after I realized how much I liked them. I went back to order more eye blend, but of course the eyes are more stable. This was almost identical flight to that team stamp one I have. And so I spent a whole round and I threw it in every tree I saw on the course, uh, which is amazing because this plastic didn't get beat up at all, but the flight did adjust. And so now this is, I can turn this one over. Um, if I need to, I can I can hit a line and make it stay turned kind of softer and, or I can throw it a little softer and, and get that straight line flight. Um, so it kind of flies almost like my uh, the S line Exodus I have that white one, but it's uh, it's uh, a little bit further, a little more glidey and honestly preferable to that flight. I love that, love those dynasties. Favorite disc in my bag right now, it's, it's hilarious. We just got those and they are definitely my favorite. So now I'm moving to distance drivers. Um, this disc has been in my bag a long time. I make good shots with it occasionally, sometimes great shots and then sometimes I just blow it up. So I'm not great at throwing understable plastic. But this is a Havoc. Um, it's an older disc. It's a, a Latitude 64 mold. And this one's actually really old. It's got that Digi stamp on it. And um, it's just that long distance. If I need something that's gonna turn, go right for me. Or just if I'm throwing uphill and I need to throw something pretty straight long, um, it tends to stay straight a little bit better. But um, I don't know what to say about it. It's, it's my roller disc as well. I'm not a great roller, don't roll a lot. But if I do roll, that's the disc I'm typically going to. Um, the next one up is uh, my Wraith, and I was at one point this is my primary distance driver, but and it might be again in the future. But I noticed when it's really windy, which it's been a lot this spring where we're at, I just can't trust it. 
and, I, and it'll turn over enough on me, but it's still probably one of my longest throwing discs. And it's just a bottom stamp rate. This thing was pretty stable when I got it, but it's at that point now where I can um, put a move on it, turn it over, but it's still stable enough. It kind of hooks back up. Um, so this one's got a little bit of a heartbeat. You can probably hear that. Um, but I mean, you guys know what a rate is. It's a, a great disc. Just, it's a little too finicky for me to be my primary distance driver. It doesn't, like I said, doesn't really handle the wind. And, and I had that Faro in that slot for a while as well, but just preferred the, the Wraith over the Faro. And so I threw Destroyers forever, you guys, and I really probably shouldn't have switched, but the Rive came out and everybody talked about it and got excited about it. And I really liked how smooth the plastic was and how it felt in the winter time, the consistency. And overall, I, I don't think it's that big of a difference. I don't know that it's a better disc than a, than a Destroyer, but I've got some beat in right where I like them right now. So this is my first one. I bagged three Rives. Uh, two are identical colors. And uh, this first one is just the regular run. And uh, it's beat in really nice. So it's actually about the same stability as that Wraith. And um, if I just needed to, something to go through the woods really fast or or trying to get max distance, this Rive is right there as well as far as that. It, it'll tend to turn a little more. Um, but I wanted one that was a little bit understable. So I can forehand that thing as well. Um, this is the exact same run, I think, and same stamp. I think I got them at the same time. Both those are 173. But this one has, in my mind, a perfect stability right now. Um it is just stable enough that I can go for it and it'll it'll respect that. I can flip it to flat hyzer, but it's not really turning over on me. And um, I can still throw it into a headwind and it'll 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 still hold up. Um, but I really like the way these rives feel as well on the forehand. I noticed I watched Ricky Wysocki's in the bag earlier today and I noticed he's actually was forehanding them as well. Great disc. It's a great disc. I think it's what Latitude's been looking for in that comp competitor to the destroyer. Um, so, and then I have a, a kind of a goofy one. So this is a first run. If you know anything about the rise, the first runs are flippier, but not this one. You can hear that again. This one is super domey and it's kind of clear. You can see the stamp through it. It's almost like a champion blend of it. Um, and I actually had a backup one of these as well, but uh, super stable. Um, I haven't thrown the orbit rive yet, but probably similar um, if those are more stable versions. But um, just this one, I forehand a lot. I like to, to, to just huck on it. Does It typically will hold up or or a big backhand that I need to, to make sure it doesn't get turned over. Um, so that's it. I'm going to try to add some throws on here in the midst of this video description. That's my in the bag for 2022. I hope you enjoyed it. And go buy Infinite Discs. They make some incredible products. And I'm proud to be a team member. Thanks so much.